Recently, Vercel released V3 of their AI SDK, and I wanted to talk about this because to me, this is the first time I've looked at any of these AI SDKs or these AI things, and I really thought, oh yeah, that actually makes sense, and I might actually want to implement that into some of the stuff I'm building. If you're as terminally online as I am, I'm sure you've seen all of the insane AI hype everywhere. It is all over Twitter. I think it took over YouTube for a while. It doesn't really show up in my feed that much, but my God, every single day, Twitter is just flooded with AI is the future. It's going to do all this stuff. And honestly, they're probably right. But to me, I haven't seen a huge amount of super compelling implementations and use cases into like my normal day-to-day -day apps. The biggest ones I can think of are like the algorithms for TikTok or YouTube. Those are all AI based and very, very good. Um, I've used seen like a lot of like logo generation, image generation things, but again, those kind of feel like GPT wrappers and they're not that useful. I've seen a lot of people use it to like cheat on homework and stuff like that. I've seen it, um, obviously Copilot is a really good example. But for a lot of the stuff I'm building, I haven't seen a super compelling use case to put this in and enhance the product in a meaningful way until now. And what Vercel made here, I think, is really, really cool. So the Vercel AI SDK v3 is introducing generative UI support. And that's really what I want to talk about here today. It's not so much about the SDK itself, but the principle here of generative UI within our LLMs. So you can see right down here, we have these two little examples. We have this search and we have this task planning. Basically what it's letting us do is the whole idea here is we can talk to the AI back and forth and you create this set of functions that the AI can call. You create this like search contacts function, which will return a contacts component here. And you can have the AI actually call that and display that out to the end user. And what I think this can lead to is these sort of text-based interfaces for actual products, which is really cool. If we go over here to their actual demo, their little AI SDK 3.0 demo, this is using Next.js, React Server Components, and their new uh, 3.0 AI SDK. We're not going to be going through code in this video, just high-level concepts. I'll probably do, I need to go through and actually build something with this. I want to try integrating it into one of my projects, and then I might talk about how the code works there. But really here, if we go here, we can just say, okay, what are you able to do? And it'll give you some answer. It'll tell you, help you with stock trading. It's like, okay, give me some info for Tesla. And now when you say, give me some info for Tesla, it will give you this actual component. So instead of these pre just a bunch of text dumping out on your screen it can go into this library of components which are given to the actual ai sdk which i think you can see in the source code i'll look at that in a second but you can go in there it has all these functions available to it and we can call that into the actual response so the ai is just taking my prompt of give me some info about tesla and then it's smart enough to be like okay here's some ui for that i can then go ahead and say um let me buy some tesla this is obviously like a simulated fake thing, but it'll give me this little UI counter. So you can imagine how this would actually work in a real app. This would be a way for us to interact with a product or website almost entirely via text. And that pretty much means that pretty quickly that could be translated entirely into voice. You could imagine very quickly how this would turn into, hey Siri, give me some info about Tesla, give you the Tesla component. Hey Siri, give, let me buy some Tesla, give you the Robin Hood Tesla component, select hundred shares, hit purchase. It'll run, actually fulfill the thing because AIs are not very good at actually running API requests and stuff because they're text-based. But if you have these components which are canned and it just has to pick which component to serve to you, that ends up making a ton of sense for this actual thing. Right here, this is some code from the Vercel AI demo thing. And you can see that right here, we have this list of functions which the AI is given access to. And the functions are show stock price. You give it a description of what that actually does. You give it some parameters that it has to pass in there. You can go ahead and do the same thing for the show stock purchase UI, do the same thing for listing stocks, et cetera, et cetera. This basically allows us to do application specific AI stuff within our apps and really create these text-based interfaces, which I think could be really cool. Using my own site as an example here, something we're kicking around and something I think we're gonna end up implementing later this year is going to be an LLM interface for our actual app. Imagine for, if you will, for a second, it would be really, really cool if you could log onto this site and just have like an LLM interaction feature where you could ask it questions about our curated data set and you could get answers which would render out components 
for the actual site itself. So we go in here to like recent trades and let's just say we wanna take a look at Rockwell Automation or whatever. We get this really nice stock graph where you can see all the different insider trades when they happened, all this stuff. Imagine if I was just sitting here and I'm like, okay, give me the 10 industrials companies which have had the highest amount of insider trading volume in the last 30 days. The AI will have access to a list of components. It can take that data from that prompt. It can feed that in there. It can then display out some card or UI or whatever, which will have a list of 10 different industrial stocks. And then from there, I can say, okay, give me more information about Rockwell Automation. And then it pops up this nice graph. And suddenly we have this really nice text-based way of actually working with our data and actually working with our app. And it's a way of using AI that doesn't just wrap GPT and doesn't just create some silly thing that can be blown up by GPT at any moment. It takes the existing functionality of our app and our product and allows the AI to enhance it. And to me, that feels like the natural next step for what building with this is actually gonna mean. And that's something that friends and I, we are investing heavily in because, you know, I want to figure out how to use this stuff. It's an exciting new technology. And a huge question is, what's the best way we can use this? And it really does feel like to me, these sort of text-based user interfaces are really something I want to explore. And I just kind of wanted to show that off. I think Vercel's SDK is doing a really good job here, taking some steps in the right direction. And I'm excited to see where it goes next. I'm a Svelkit guy, so not a huge fan that it only works in React server components right now. But the mental model of what they sort of gave here of giving your LLM a list of functions, I'm sure I can find a way to implement that in Spellkit. So if you enjoyed this, make sure you like and subscribe, and I will talk to you soon.